Hey, my name's Mev, and I want to show you how I've set up my MacBook Air for developing my own personal tools and workflows. I'll just focus on the programs that I use most often, so there isn't too many things to cover. But yeah, hopefully you get something out of this, and so let's start with my programming language of choice, and that's Python. The first thing I do is check the Python version that comes pre-installed on the Mac. You can do this by opening up a terminal and typing Python 3 version. As you can see, I have Python 3.9 pre-installed, which I'm happy enough with. If you want to download a newer version of Python, you can simply do that through their website. So here I'm downloading the latest version of Python, 3.11.4. Now in a new terminal, if I type the same Python 3 command, it displays the latest downloaded version. And I can list all the versions I have installed, which are currently two. So to get coding with Python, I can just type Python 3 and you can see I'm in a Python 3.11.4 shell. This isn't what I use to write code, I use a code editor, which I'll show you soon. But the shell is a good place to test out lines of code. And there's an even better one called IPython. IPython, which stands for Interactive Python, is just an enhanced interactive shell. To install IPython, I ran pip3 install IPython. Bear in mind that pip3 is an environment path pointing to the latest version of Python I installed. We can double check this by typing the pip3 version command, mine showing 3.11. If I wanted to download IPython for my Python 3.9 version, I type pip3.9 install IPython. Once that's installed, I can add the environment path to my zprofile configuration file. This just lets me run IPython by simply typing IPython. As you can see, it looks similar to what we had before, but IPython has some added features like tab completion, which lets you see all the methods within a class. There's history access, which keeps a history of previously executed commands. And you can also run multiple lines of code by either typing or pasting it in straight from Stack Overflow or somewhere else. Honestly, there's so many more features it has, but those are just a few of my favorites. PyQt is another great framework for creating graphical user interfaces. I use it to build interactive windows, dialog boxes, buttons, menus, and other various GUI components. It also offers cross-platform compatibility, which means PyQt can run on different operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and others. To download it, I use the same pip3 command, and once it's installed, I always check if it's working by launching IPython in a shell, and then try to import the PyQt module. Qt Designer is another tool I use. It's sort of a visual representation of PyQt. It lets you build GUIs interactively using all the different widgets that are available in Qt. It's a good way to learn PyQt because you can view the source code of anything you make in Qt Designer. And if you don't want to code the UI, you can simply export it out and plug that exported file directly into your Python code like so. At this point, I only use Qt Designer for quick mockups and testing different layouts. But for any UI UX development, I moved over to using Figma. Figma is essentially a design tool. It gives you basic primitives and shapes that you can combine together to design almost anything, especially GUIs and websites. The shapes that you draw can be made into interactive components, and that's where the power of it really lies. I can make a bunch of widgets just like you saw in Qt Designer, and then I can piece them together to build an interactive tool using no code at all. The benefit of making it interactive is that you can get a feel for the user experience. And that's what's great about Figma. I can really use it to home in on the UI and UX before writing any code. When it comes to finally writing code, my code editor of choice is Sublime. I really like it for its simplicity, speed, and extensive options. It's designed to look very simple, but if you know some of the shortcuts, it can be so fast to work in. Studio Code is the popular one nowadays. I use that too, but I've been using Sublime for a long while now, and honestly, I've just gotten used to it. Now with all these tools installed, I usually create shortcuts for them in a terminal so that I can run them from a shell. In my zprofile config file, you can see a list of aliases that I've created. Now rather than typing Python 3, I can simply just type pi. Here's another one for IPython. I can simply just type IPy, and for Sublime, I have an alias pointing to its executable file. And that's my main development tools. There's a few other programs like Xcode, JavaScript, and SQLite, which are sometimes used, but I'll leave those for another video. I plan to make more videos, which will range from apps I use for editing, how I set up my MacBook system preferences, general Mac apps I use, and I'll make a video going deeper into the tools I spoke about in this video. 
If you can subscribe, that would be great. And I really just want to say I appreciate the support I've been getting recently. I do intend to make more and more videos, so why not stick around and I'll see you later.